Hi everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. I am your host Faraz and in this video we will be solving a question called subsets. So as we are doing the recursion and backtracking, this is such a question which could be solved using backtracking. So we are going to look at one of the solution to solve this question which is going to be very simple and after that in the future videos we will see a generalized approach to solve all such questions uh, such as subsets, combination sum, the permutations so we will see a generalized approach to that as well in the future videos but as, but as of now the main focus is to make you understand how you can use recursion to form to find the subsets of a given set so you already know what a subset is so basically if you have one two three uh, these are the subsets which can uh, which are containing only one element that is one two and three individually then one two one three two three one two three so these are all the subsets of one two three this uh, entire thing the collection of all these subsets is called a power set alright so we have to generate the power set and we can return it in any order so um, and all the elements are unique so that means we don't have to sort the given array alright so what's the power set how can we generate the power set or subsets of an element so let us say we have one two three so if you want to form the subset of one two three each element have two choices either it can be present in a subset or it could be absent in a subset okay so each element is going to have two choices now let us say um, this is the given set now we have to find the subsets so for the element one we have two choices one choice is uh, that we take one into consideration so one is present and then the elements which are left are two three so two three are left the other choice is one is absent and the elements that are left are two three so the answer to this this part and this part we will find using recursion okay and this we already know this we have decided the uh, so first option is to decide that one is there in the set the second option is to decide that one is not there in the set so these are the two decisions that we are making at this step and the answer to the leftover array the leftover elements two three or maybe four five six whatever is present that we will find using recursion so recursion is going to give us answer for this part and we are going to decide for one okay now if we go further into recursion now we have two three as the uh, entire uh, array which is given to us then we will make decision for two and we will call recursion for the elements which are beyond two in this case there's only one element that is three let me take a bigger example for more clarity let's say we have one two three four five and six now for this I am going to take decision only for one and recursion is going to give me the answer for this part I'm going to call recursion to get the answer for this part I will say recursion to give me the answer uh, starting from 2 and for 1 I will decide whether 1 should be present in the set or not so let me just code this out we are not returning anything so I'm going to make this function as void now I'm going to call this function as help I usually call the recursive function as helper function so here we have the uh, integer i which will denote that we are on the ith element and we just have to decide for the ith element that i ith element should be present in the subset or not and then we have a vector of int nums and we are going to pass this as a reference you must remember that we always pass the vectors or strings as reference if we don't want them to change why so because if we pass them without using this ampersand without using reference then it will make its copy it will it will make its copy in each recursive call and copying date takes a lot of space as well as a lot of time we go of n time in copying n elements so that's why I always pass this as a reference then another vector in this vector we will uh, store the elements this is my temporary vector so in this I, I will be storing elements to make the subset to make one subset okay now let us say if i is equal to nums dot size this is the base condition of the recursion so in this case we reached till the end now we cannot go further into the recursion because we already reached till the end of the nums array now in this case whatever is there inside my temp that i'm going to store inside the answer so i will make answer later let's just forget about this step otherwise if if i am at some element the current element ith element so for the ith element i have the option to consider it or to not consider it so first of all let me just consider it okay 
so temp dot push back the ith element so I am pushing the ith element into the uh, subset okay and after that I will call the recursive recursion function from the element i plus 1 nums and temp so recursion is going to do the uh, rest of the work okay so I inserted the current element I considered the current element so my current element is present in temps and then I will call the recursion from i plus 1th element so recursion is going to deal uh, for everything that is beyond the ith element okay this is the first step so this is the step to take the ith element okay now the second step is to not consider it into the subset so what do you have to do for that first of all we will have to remove it so temp dot pop back so the last element is removed so now inside temp the ith element is not present okay and now call the recursion i plus one temp and nums wait nums and temp okay so now the ith element is not present and then we are calling recursion so this call this recursive call which is in the line number 13 this recursive call is when the ith element is present inside the temp then we popped that element out so the ith element is not present and then again we are calling the same recursive call without taking ith element into consideration so we can say this is the step to ignore the ith element okay so these are the only two decisions that we have to make then finally at the end when we reach till the end and we don't have any element so in uh, so now we have to stop the recursive calls so for that there's something in the temp so this temp is one of the subset so I have to store this subset somewhere that I will be storing in a vector of vector so a vector vector of int I'm going to make it a global variable this answer answer dot push back temp finally I will return the answer after calling this function also this is not a good practice to make it global I will just tell you how to do this so before that let me just call this function and in this function I will pass 0 nums and a temporary vector and before this I'm just making the temporary vector here let me just run this now okay I have to return the answer as well and it got accepted now how to do this like how to not make it global so to avoid it I can pass it as a reference again here so vector of vector of int answer passed as a reference and I can push it back into the answer and I will have to make this here and passing this into the recursive calls now let me try to submit this again So this is how you should be doing this in the coding interviews don't make this global because it is not a good practice to make a variable global now we are going to discuss more approach to solve this question in future videos and we will discuss one generalized approach to solve all such questions so make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get notifications for the future videos so before returning I was getting a request that I should be doing a dry run basically dry run means that I should take an example and then tell how this code is actually working with that example so let me just take an example and try to make you understand the code uh, I'm taking the small example that is 1 2 and 3 okay now the given nums is 1 2 and 3 okay and uh, initially the int i this is 0 we are here now we have to take the decision for uh, this element and we have to pass recursion for this element and there's a uh, there's a vector temp okay so whatever I'm writing inside these braces there is that denotes the what content is there inside the temp first of all I'm at 1 the first thing that I am I'm doing is to consider the ith element so for that I'm considering 1 into the temp so this is the temp and then I will pass recursion starting from 2 3 recursion is going to return me an answer for this so this is the first decision this is the first decision the second decision is to ignore uh, 1 so ignoring 1 temp is empty and then 2 3 is left next for this one we have two options the first option is to consider 2 so if we do that 
this was the content of temp already and 2 will also come now inside this and 3 will be left for future and here 1 is already there and 2 will be ignored and 3 will be left to compute here also two decision here also two decisions the first one is to consider 2 so initially the temp was empty 2 is now there in the temp and 3 is left here also uh, it was empty and 2 is also not considered so this is when we are ignoring 2 so it is again empty and 3 will be left now here we have to make two decisions again the first one is to consider 3 so 1 2 and 3 inside temp nothing is left so the i is now equal to num sort size this is i equal to the n where n is num sort size okay in this case this temp will be pushed back inside the vector of vector of int answer so this is one of the answer coming here we are ignoring 3 so only 1 2 is there inside the temp and i is equal to n i is equal to n so this will be pushed back inside the answer so this is one of the answer this is one of the answer then again here two cases first one is to consider 3 so 1 3 inside uh, the temp and then here to ignore 3 so only 1 is there inside the temp here to consider 3 so 2 3 and here to ignore 3 so only 2 is inside the temp here to consider 3 so only 3 here to ignore 3 so nothing is inside the temp so this is the empty subset this is the subset containing 3 this is the subset containing 2 1 2 3 1 3 1 2 1 2 and 3 so all the 8 subsets are generated this way using recursion right so this is how this recursion recursive code is working but basically um, this is a, there's no difference between recursion and backtracking you should not differentiate that what's the backtracking part in this basically this is the backtracking part the line number 16 is backtracking why is it backtracking because backtracking is undoing some changes we did some changes to the temp we pushed back something inside the temp okay but we also want to see what's the answer if we don't push back this element if we ignore this element the first uh, the first option is to see what will happen if we consider this element okay we did it using uh, these two steps the second step is to see what will happen without considering this element these are the two possibilities so if you want to see what will happen without considering the ith element we need to pop that element out of the temp so if you want to pop that this step is called backtracking undoing the changes that we made so this is the change that we made by pushing the element and this the this is the step in which we undo that change by popping that element this is backtracking this part is backtracking part okay as simple as that so it is nothing it is just recursion just a fancy name for recursion and this is how you write the code for this right if you have any doubts make sure to leave your comments and also the space complexity of this is big o of 2 raised to the power n exponential uh, why 2 raised to the power n as i told you that um, if you want to generate all the possible subsets and we have these elements 1 2 3 4 whatever so for each element there are two choices first choice is to select this and second choice is to ignore this so two choice for this two for this two for this two for this and so on so there's basically two raised to the power n twice choices so these many subsets are there and these many recursive calls will be made right that's why the space and the time complexity both for this solution is big o of 2 raised to the power n there is exponential and exponential time complexities uh, they are very high uh, if we increase the power of n so here n is given as only 10 so 2 raised to the power 10 will efficiently work 2 raised to the power n will efficiently work but let us say if n is given as something like 50 or uh, 20 I think in 20 also it might work but uh, in 50 it won't work in 30 it won't work so we have to see the constraints also in this the constraints were really low that is why we were able to solve this question using exponential time complexity so this is it for the solution if you like the video make sure to leave your likes and make sure to leave your comments and your suggestions also make sure to subscribe to the channel thank you